Good morning. My name's Krista. Welcome to Bruce County Public Library. Today we're pleased to help Philip Craig from the Nuclear Innovation Institute and the NII Explore program. He's the director and one of his many jobs is to bring awesome science activities to our communities. Please feel free to leave comments or questions on our YouTube channel in the comment section and we will answer them as they come in. Also, please let us know what you what you thought about the program by filling in the survey. There will be a link in the description below and let us know who you are and where you are so we can say hi. OK, off to you, Philip. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is day four of our science program uh, over March break. And perhaps more importantly, today's St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day uh, to all of the, uh, the, the Irish and wish there were Irish today. Uh, we, I love St. Patrick's Day, uh, one of my favorite holidays. But uh, today we're not gonna be talking so much about St. Patrick's Day. We are going to be talking about uh, some density. We're going to be talking about how oil and water and how they don't mix and all sorts of things like that. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I want to just recap a couple things from yesterday. Now, yesterday, we were talking about air pressure and how uh, you can, uh, we can control things uh, using air pressure. So we did an experiment where we put uh, some paper under water in a cup and it didn't get wet. And we also did an experiment where we could blow a ping pong ball up in the air on the end of the straw using something called the Bernoulli principle, which means uh, that low pressure, when air is moving quickly, it has lower pressure, uh, which is the reason why planes can fly uh, and, and the reason why we keep that ping pong ball up. So I know a bunch of people were paying attention there because they sent us some pictures and some videos over Instagram. Uh, Instagram, uh, some people sent it to our Facebook page, which we love. Uh, so we're just going to take a minute and we are going to celebrate some of those uh, kid scientists. So in third place, in third place, our, our third place kid scientist of the day is Declan. Now Declan, he's doing a great job here. You can see he's blowing. And he's got, uh, he's got that ball really floating, which I, which I like. All right. So great job, Declan. I will say, though, and this, this was a very tough call around our office because Declan's sister also sent a picture in. And uh, her face uh, just takes it for me. So this is Declan's sister, Kaylee. And Kaylee, she's doing the same thing. She's got that ball, but she's really blowing. She's got a little bit higher. And you can see that intensity in her eyes. She's saying, Bernoulli, I'm doing it. Okay, so uh, you see Dex, or you see Kaylee, she's really focused. She's got uh, that ball in the air. Uh, and do you know what, we love that. We love seeing people uh, doing science, not just like calmly being like, but really getting after it. <sighs> so that's fantastic. So Declan, Kaylee, thanks for your pictures, but, uh, the, the kid scientist of the day and the person who is going home with their very own tinker crate like this uh, is uh, all the way from Point Clark, uh, our good friend and often chat commenter, Cody. Now, Cody sent in a video, uh, so let's roll that film. There you go. And Cody is back with us again today. All right, so Cody, thank you so much for sending in that video. Uh, we're going to get in contact uh, with your mom or your dad or your parents uh, and figure out how to get one of these boxes delivered right to your door. That was some good work. I like how you really demonstrated that experiment. Hey, Phil. How air pressure. Phil, yes, Krista. We've got Cody on the line again today. Nice. Cody's in the chat. Cody's in the chat. Cody. And Royce is back from King Carden. And Danielle McBride and her crew are back. So we got, we got Cody from Point Clark. We got Royce and King Carden. 
We got Danielle and King Curtin, which is great. Uh, if you're watching somewhere, let us know because we'd love to hear it. Uh, and I'd love to chat with you. So if you have any questions, make sure you're hitting up the chat, even if you're just saying what you're wearing or doing for St. Patrick's Day, because I'd love to hear about it. Uh, all right. So once again, uh, if you want to be our kid scientist of the day, make sure you take a picture uh, or a video and send it in to us, and you could win a tinker crate of your own. Uh, Cody might be doing a little roller coaster science a little bit later. So that is great. We are going to uh, move in to what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so let's chat a little bit about the things you are going to need for success. So what you're going to need today, you're going to need uh, some baby oil, some canola oil. Uh, once again, if you don't have exactly these types of oil, that's no big deal. Having two different types would be nice, though. Um, baby oil works really well because it's a very light oil, uh, and it will actually sit on top of uh, like canola or vegetable oil or anything like that. So uh, if you only have one type of oil, the experiment will still work. So you can do that. Uh, but having two types, it, it, it makes it a little bit better. And you'll also need some ice cubes, okay? Uh, so you have some uh, two different types of oil, ice cubes, and a glass that you can see through. Once again, oil, ice cubes, and a glass. I put some food coloring in my ice cubes just so you guys can see it a little bit better. You guys don't have to do that at home. Don't worry about it. All right, so while you guys are collecting that stuff, I'm gonna head back to camera one. Oh, hey, camera one. Uh, so I'm gonna, back at camera one, while you guys are collecting your oil and your ice cubes, maybe your, your glass, uh, Greta and I, my good friend Greta, you remember her from yesterday, we went and toured the Bruce Power Visitor Center. It's gonna be opening up this summer. So we got a little sneak peek and we wanna show, uh, show you guys what we learned about when we visited it. Philip and Greta, science adventure. We're gonna explode. We're gonna explode. Philip and Greta, science adventure. We're gonna explore. Bruce Power makes a lot of electricity, and they're really good at it. But they also make something else, and that's called Cobalt 60. Now, Cobalt 60, Greta, what Cobalt 60 does is it creates like a little like gamma ray of energy. These blue lines, they're kind of, they're called a gamma knife, which means they can go through uh, parts of your brain, they just kind of go through and it doesn't bother them. But when they all focus on one spot, then they can destroy tumors and fight cancer. What we need you to do here is see can you line up all of these blue lines that represent the gamma knives and try to get that tumor. Let's see it. Focus in the laser. Focus in the laser is the job. Right at the tumor. Oh, oh, you got it. Got the cancer. Yes. It's super helpful uh, for people looking to have cancer treatments. All right, so that was Greta and I learning all about isotopes and what they can do uh, to help fight cancer, which is actually pretty cool how those, those gamma rays can go through your brain and only exactly where they intersect, that's where they, uh, that's where they can do their work, which is pretty exciting. Uh, before we move on, I have uh, a bunch of hellos to say. We have the notorious JMC, uh, rocking with his grandma in Lion's Head today. Uh, so welcome. We're pumped up to see you. We got the Brockton crew, all 28 of them uh, in Walkerton. We're pumped to have you guys back, which is, which is great. Uh, and we also have a couple of young ladies in Tara. Is that right, Krista? Abby and Emma. Hi, guys. Abby and Emma. Yes, Abby and Emma. Uh, welcome. I'm pumped up that you guys are here. Uh, and we're going to get into our experiment. Okay, so we're going to get going. Uh, so let's do this. We're going to head to camera three. 
All right, so we're gonna be doing uh, a special experiment today. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna kind of chat about something. So we have, we have just a glass of water right here. Okay, this is normal water. Mm, delicious, all right? So this is just normal water and I'm gonna pop some ice in it, okay? I'm just gonna put a little bit of ice in it and just kind of see what happens, okay? So I have an ice cube here. A pretty standard ice cube. Actually, I'm going to use one that's a little bit red so we can see it better. So, that's your standard ice cube. I'm going to pop it in and you're going to notice something. Boop, it floats. Okay, ice floats. Okay, now this is actually kind of interesting and it's something that uh, is a little bit different with water than almost anything else in the world. So, most things when they turn from a liquid to a solid, they get more dense. And what that means, if something's more dense, it means the particles that make up of every, that make everything up, they get closer together and they get, like, they get really closely packed so they can't move, which makes sense when you think about it. Fluids, they can flow, but then uh, solids, they're dense, they don't move very much. But something's really interesting about water, which essentially means uh, when it gets really cold, it actually arranges itself in a really specific pattern. And there's little gaps in all those particles uh, where, they're, they're, where there's like nothing in there, which actually makes it less dense than when it's a fluid. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. It's just super cool, so I thought I'd mention it. So water weighs about one gram per cubic centimeter. And if you don't know how big a cubic centimeter is, uh, if you look at like your mom or your dad's hand, look at like their fingernail. Like you see like their fingernail part. If you look at like how wide their fingernail is and then how tall it is and kind of how deep it is, that much water would weigh about one gram, the tip of your, of your mom or your dad's finger, okay? So that's about one gram if that was water. Now ice, ice is a little bit different, okay? Because ice, it weighs a little bit less, okay? So when water freezes, it weighs just a little bit less, so it will float on top of the water because it's less dense, okay? Less dense, which means it's not quite as heavy, so it will float on the top. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna do an experiment with ice, water, and oil, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put uh, my cup here and I'm gonna fill it up maybe halfway with canola oil, okay? I'm gonna fill it up about halfway with canola oil. This is maybe a good thing to get uh, your mom or your dad, or your grandma or grandpa to help you with because if you spill oil, whoo, she is a doozy to clean up, okay? So to get your glass, fill it up eh, maybe halfway with oil. If you have a really big glass, you don't have to go all the way. What about this much oil in a glass? Okay, so just do that. Take your time. We don't want any uh, any big messes. So take your time. Just relax. I'm gonna head over to camera one for a second. All right. I just want to say a big thank you. Like once again, I love seeing everybody here. Oh, I can see Krista. She's making it. So that good things are happening over in uh, in the Lucknow branch. Oh, yeah, Krista, so Krista, be, you're going to want maybe a little bit more in there. You have a very wide container. Yeah, so you're going to want a little bit of space. Is that good? Yeah, because what's going to happen here, what we're going to be looking for is we're going to put in a little bit of ice and it's going to melt. Uh, but uh, some cool things are going to happen. Here. So, uh which we're, which we're gonna talk about. So you should have a layer of vegetable oil in your, uh, in your container, which is great, that's super good. So I'm gonna head back here and then I'm gonna pour in some baby oil. Now the thing about baby oil, when you pour it in, if you have it, don't just like squirt it right in so it's like a hard stream. You wanna just kind of pour it in the side so that it, it doesn't mix with the vegetable oil the canola oil. Now it will sit on top and it will separate if you do mix it in. So it's not a huge deal, but 
uh, it'll work just a little bit faster if it doesn't mix in together in the in the first place. So, so I'm going to put a, quite a bit of that in. So then you have, yeah. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but the vegetable oil is on the bottom, and then the baby oil is on the top. Okay, you can see there's a a pretty clear line. I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the on the camera, but the baby oil is just sitting on top. And we give you guys a chance to do that. Once again, that's a good thing for maybe mom and dad to help you with because, boy, let me tell you, cleaning up oil is no fun at all. All right? So, Chris, once again, if you don't have two types of oil, if you only have one type, that's okay. The experiment will still work. Um, we're just, it, it's just like a little clearer if you have the two types. Okay. So I'm going to give everyone a chance to do that. They're getting ready. Krista, are you ready for the next step? I'm ready. Classic Krista. Classic. All right. Once again, if you're doing this at home uh, and you have a question or a comment, let us know in the chat uh, because we'd love to hear it. Uh, because it's more fun when you do things together. All right. So we're going to head back to camera three. And what we're going to do, we're going to put our ice cube. Mine, I put some food coloring in it uh, before I froze it, just so you guys could see it a little bit better. And I'm going to drop it into, into my cup. Now, because I have the two types of oil, you're going to see something really interesting happen. The ice is not floating on the top of the oil because the ice is denser, it's heavier than the baby oil, but it's lighter than the, the canola oil on the bottom. So we remembered that water weighs about one gram per cubic centimeter. One gram per cubic centimeter. Now, ice, it weighs 9.2 grams per cubic centimeter. So it's a little bit lighter. So you're gonna have water down here. You're gonna have uh, ice floating on top. And because ice is less dense, it will never be able to get underneath where the water is. But then we have one other thing and we have this vegetable oil. Now this, uh, there's canola oil or vegetable oil and it weighs about not 0.93. So what we have here is that the ice is gonna sit on top of the oil, but then oil is going to sit on top of the water. And you're saying, oh, but Philip, I didn't put any water in my glass. Well, you did because ice, when it melts, it is going to sink all the way down to the bottom. So we have two drops that have kind of melted out this one. Oh, you're sure. about to see another one. Oh, yeah, Krista? No, well, as I was gonna say, I can see my ice cube's doing funny things, but there's a pocket of water under my ice cube where it's melting. That's right. Like, so mine is just about to drop. Oh, 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 and oh, you can see so, it's so, so, Yeah. Philip, we yeah. got, so at the McBrides, they've got their vegetable oil and their baby oil and they're doing well. And the, and the Ziegler's, the ice is melting a bit and the water's sinking to the bottom. They think it's pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's important to note something else here. There's a little bit of chemistry happening. Oh, we're about to get a big water bubble to drop to the bottom. Oh, yeah, it's just holding on by a thread. Cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And you can kind of see on the bottom how, like, the water isn't kind of rejoining together. It's staying in those bubbles. Now, there's a little bit of chemistry happening. We're not going to get too far into it, uh, just because that's not really the point of this lesson. But oil and water, they don't mix. Like, they will never mix. They don't like each other uh, because they're kind of made of different things. So oil is made primarily of carbon and hydrogen. Uh, and, when, and water is made out of oxygen and hydrogen. And what that means is they just don't like, they, they bond together in different ways. So oil, uh, they bond in non-polar ways, and water has polar bonds, which is a little bit too intense for what we're talking about. 
But essentially all it means is that oil and water, they never mix. So what you can see here is the ice is kind of floating in between the uh, less dense baby oil, the denser vegetable oil or canola oil, and then the ice as it melts, it's actually becoming more dense and sinking down to the bottom, which I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a cool experiment. I could watch this like all day. I probably won't, but I could, all right? Now, if you're watching this and you're saying, oh man, this is pretty cool. I would like maybe like to share this with somebody. You can do that uh, by popping it on Instagram or even our Facebook page. So our Instagram handle is at NII Explorer. Uh, we'll pop that in the chat for you. Or you can just uh, find us on Facebook at the Nuclear Innovation Institute. Because we would love to see, oh yeah, this video in slow motion. <laughs> it's about to drop. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, Krista, is it working for you? It is. It is. Let's, I got let's my take a little look. The bottom. You can't see them because everything's kind of light colored, but yeah, it's working cool. Oh, hold it up so we can see. Is that better? Can you see? Yes. Is your ice cube just sitting on the bottom? It's kind of floating along the side. I had to, I didn't have a freezer, so they weren't super cold when I got oh. them here. So they had already started to melt a little bit. And oh, that is so interesting. So I just want to talk about this for a little bit. Krista's saying, oh man, my ice isn't floating on the top because it had already started to melt. And when ice melts, all of those bonds that are kind of keeping its, uh, its, its molecules apart, they, they start to kind of melt with it. And what happens is that water actually becomes more dense as a liquid than as a solid, um, which is super interesting. I actually had the same problem. I was testing this out yesterday and I didn't wait long enough for my ice cubes to freeze. So mine, they had a little bit of water in the middle and they just sank down to the bottom. So there you go. I think that's a, something really important to talk about when we talk about science. Because when you do an experiment, even if the experiment doesn't work, it doesn't mean that it failed. It just means that you learned something else. So we had an opportunity to learn that, hey, we have to make sure that that ice freezes the whole way. Because if we don't, and there's still some water in it, it'll be too heavy and it will sink down to the bottom. So if this is working for you, let me know in the chat. Uh, if we got like 28 of these happening and walking right now, please let me know because I'd love to see it. Oh yeah, another one of these is gonna drop. I know this is probably not the most exciting TV, but man, there's something very satisfying about watching these water bubbles drip down. It's very cool. Oh. And I like your- It's red. holding on. I like that you yeah. colored your ice cubes. It makes it, it makes it easy. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get it. Oh, one last drop. Oh, 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 yes. It's happening. Boom. So Taylor says All it right. reminds her of a lava lamp. Yeah, it is like, who said that? Sorry. Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, that might just be the comment of the day because that's the same thing that it reminded me of. Uh, it's kind of like a lava lamp in reverse. It's all... Because most lava lamps, the bubble there that the wax bubbles float up, but this one is like no, it's dropping down. So that's cool. Oh yeah. All right. So, oh, what's that? As I say, that's that's the Brockton, that's the Brockton Child Care Center. That's all yeah. right. Well, you know what? I'm not surprised that they had a good comment because they got a lot of brain power in that room. They got a lot of brains in there. All right. So, if you want to see another experiment that's a little bit different but still has to do with density. Uh, my science buddy Beckett and I, we did a really cool one uh, with raisins, uh, and then we put them in normal water versus carbonated water. Uh, so take a look at this, uh, and you're going to see another, uh, another example of density. I'm here with my buddy Beckett, and we are going to be uh, learning a little bit about how things float, why things float. Do you think these raisins are going to float or going to sink? Uh, my first guess is float. Put them in the water. Let's find out. 
Oh, so that was a pretty definitive. But those raisins sank right down to the bottom. Okay, so what does that mean if the raisins sink right down to the bottom? No matter how light they are, they'll always sink. Yeah, so no matter how big it is, it doesn't matter the size of it. All that, that it matters is that it's heavier, it's denser yeah, like if, than water. If, okay, so this was normal tap water. So we're gonna do an experiment where instead of using normal tap water, Ooh. we're gonna fill this cup up with sparkling water. Uh-oh. All right. Oh, oh! Ah, did you change it? I didn't, but it was bubbling. Sparkling water Bubble has, has carbonation in it, has carbon dioxide. That's what's in the bubbles. Jacket, can you pop some, some raisins in there? It's gonna float, definitely. Let's see, we'll pop it in. And what you're gonna see is that they actually dance. So what happens is the carbon dioxide it's attracted to the raisin and it says, oh, let's put them right up to the top. But then when they hit the top, the bubbles pop and they come back down. Now, those air bubbles are causing them to rise. And when they get to the top, then they'll sink back down. Do you know anything that has air bubbles that causes it to float? That maybe that helps us float? A life jacket. So what a life jacket it's is. Got, it's got air built inside it. That there's just a whole bunch of those little air bubbles which keep you coming to the surface just like these raisins. All right, so uh, that was Beckon and I. And that, in that experiment, it's actually really interesting because the raisins, I would have thought they would have floated myself. But raisins, they're, they're quite dense, so they sank right away. But when we put them in with carbonated water, all the bubbles, all the, uh, all the carbon dioxide that's in that water sticks to the raisins and adds that, that little bit of buoyancy. So that, be, that becomes less dense and they float to the top, which actually I think is really, really interesting. Um, that's a really fun experiment to do at home as well because raisins, uh, nature's candy. They're just so delicious. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Speaking of things I'm a big fan of, we're going to head to Krista Krista, I'm a big fan of the public library system. Uh, can you tell me any uh, cool things you got going on? Well, it is a beautiful day in Bruce County today. And through the library, we've got all sorts of neat stuff. So one of the things we have is, did you know you can get passes for the Ontario parks through the library for free? You can get into the park for the day for free. It comes with just a little hanger to put in your car. You just drive right in. That's kind of cool. And new, the Gray Sauble Conservation Authority has also provided us with some passes too. So if you live in that Gray Sauble Conservation Area or you're heading that way for the day, you can pick up a pass at one of the libraries. I suggest you call ahead, make sure we have one, and but you can reserve them online too. All right, so that's cool. And we've got all sorts of neat resources. This month's Owl Magazine has a whole article on how to rule your March break, which I think is super cool. And gotta get that one. Gotta get that one soon, though, because there's only like two days well, left. Well, I know, but yeah, all sorts of cool stuff you can do all the time, and always great science books. I found some more after yesterday. I went looking some more STEM green science. Just add water. I thought that was pretty appropriate for today. And science is magic because you know what? Yesterday, Philip, you were talking about how science is like magic. And I thought, oh, great. And there's also, we got all sorts of board games now you can borrow. This one's called Steam Park. You can make your own amusement park. And you try it out, little cars and stuff, and see if it works. And if it doesn't, you have to change your design and build it some more. And there's all sorts of cool stuff too. Um, another thing, 3D printers at the public libraries. So we have three of them right now. They are in Port Elgin, Chesley, and King Carden. And the first week of April, they're moving. One's coming to Lucknow, woohoo! We're gonna have a hay of a time. And there'll be Mild May and Tobermory. All right, so you guys over at Lion's Head, Tobermory area, watch for the one at Tobermory coming soon. And I, I plan on, you know, for May the 4th, May the 4th be with you. We're going to have some fun Star Wars stuff. 
That's what okay. I got up right now. There's a lot going on at the library. Yeah, lots uh, of stuff. So just to recap, you want science books? They got science books. Yep. You want board games? They got board games. You want to 3D print some stuff? You can 3D print some stuff. It's all good. Uh, if you don't know what 3D printing is, because some of you may not, uh, it's when you, like, just like when you type something up and send it to the printer, you can actually create something uh, and they'll print it out using plastic and make it into like a, a cool shape. Uh, or you could pre it's like a lightsaber. You could do all sorts of stuff. So something to think about, uh, definitely worthwhile. Also, I'm gonna put a, little pu put a little plug in. If you're looking for a cool book at the Bruce County Library, Passing Gas, How Clean Energy Makes the World Less Smelly. Cool. Uh, it's a book all about air pollution and climate change. And I hear the author is a pretty cool guy. So you can find that at your Bruce County Libraries as well. All right, so uh, that's what's going on at the library. I'm gonna take uh, just one moment and I'm gonna share with you Possibly my favorite part of the show. I'm not sure if anyone else feels the same way, but it is time for the poem of the day. Uh, and the poem of the day today, because, oh, because it is St. Patrick's Day, uh, I went with a limerick. If you don't know what a limerick is, it's a type of poem uh, that may not have originated in Ireland, but it was perfected in Ireland. So the poem of the day goes a little something like this. <laughs> it says, way back in experiment time, we made oil, or we tried to make oil and water combine, but we had just a few troubles, so we made water bubbles in this little glass of mine, and that has been the poem boop, of the day. All right. Thank you, Krista. That was delightful. All right. So once again, uh, just to recap what we learned today, we learned that oil and water, they, they don't like each other. They never like to combine because they're made of different things. And we learned that oil, water, and ice all have different uh, densities, different mass. So per cubic centimeter, this is water, it's, it's the heaviest out of all these things. Then we have oil at 0.93, and then we have ice up here. So essentially what this means is that the ice sits on the oil, the oil sits on the water, or the oil sits on the water. Okay, so when we just put the ice in and it starts to melt and it turns into water, it comes all the way through and rests on the bottom. Now, this is actually really, really important uh, when it comes to understanding density, because, uh, and we talked about this yesterday with air particles, but it's important to remember that everything, everything all around you, everything you can see, everything you can touch, is made out of tiny little particles, okay? And these little particles, they are the building blocks of everything, they're called atoms, and once you understand that, you start really understanding in a different way how the world works. All right. So that is what we're gonna be, that's kind of the end of what we're doing today. I wanna to say a big thank you to Krista. I wanna say a big uh, thank you to everyone watching. I know we got Cody, we got Royce, we have uh, Tara and, oh no, Emma and, uh, sorry? A Emma and Abby and Tara. We have the notorious uh, JMC in Lion's Head. We got Danielle at Ethan Carden and, Oh, and the Brockton, uh, the Brockton group, Brockton group, pumped up you guys are here. Uh, what I would love to see is you guys take a moment, uh, take some pictures, take some videos. Uh, there's nothing more relaxing than watching little drops of water bloop down off these things. So take some videos, uh, take some pictures and send them into our Instagram page at NII Explore. Uh, you can send them into our Facebook page, uh, the Nuclear Innovation Institute. Or you can send them into the library. If you send them into the library, uh, we would, they'll, they'll pass them over to us. Yep. All right. So do that. And if you have uh, a great picture or a great video, you might be tomorrow's scientist of the day. Now, tomorrow, we are going to be doing something really cool uh, with a little bit of chemistry. So uh, we're going to need a, uh, not a ton of ingredients, 
but we're going to need some stuff. So you can probably find all that stuff right here if uh, producer Jeremy put it up all right. Uh, but if it's not there, you're going to need two teaspoons of cornstarch, two teaspoons of water. You're going to need, uh, you don't need food coloring, but it makes it more fun. You put a little drop of food coloring in there. You're going to need uh, two containers that you can mix in. Uh, and then you're going to need a microwave. So we're going to need to warm this up a little bit. Okay. So once again, this is a good one for maybe mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, or uh, maybe your, uh, your play group leader for our Brockton friends. Uh, they might need to help you out with this stuff. But what we're going to be making, we're going to be examining why things stretch, why some things stretch, and then they go back into position. So that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Uh, but the reason things stretch is actually a very similar reason to why they bounce. So we are going to be making our own bouncy balls tomorrow, uh, which is super fun. So get ready. It is going to be uh, a hoot of a time, maybe even a hoot and a half. Okay? So uh, get ready. That's going to be fun tomorrow. And until then, I hope you all have a very happy